Hello YouTube, uh, welcome to Weld Fever. This is part two of the uh, Miller 200DX power adapter video. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make an adapter and I'm going to do it using this cord here uh, which I got at a local big box. If you'll notice this is a 10 aug uh, 3 wire. You can see here at the end that it's uh, white, black, and green. And this, the uh, reason I selected this wire is because the manual that came with the 200DX specifically stated that uh, minimally for an extension cord you need to use a 10 aug wire. So that's why I'm doing that. Um, if you choose to make one yourself, I highly recommend that you follow the instructions uh, provided by Miller and do it the right way because if you go too small uh, it can heat up really bad and potentially cause a fire and you don't want anything like that so uh, like I said in my last video uh, this video here is just for entertainment purposes to show you all what I did but I'm not an electrician and I'm not my purpose is not to give you a how-to advice on you know what to do here uh, just thought you'd enjoy seeing some solutions that I came up with and maybe you can uh, use those ideas uh, for your own projects. Okay so the next two items that we'll need here are the two plugs. This plug here is a standard 110, 120 volt. Uh, it's actually a 15 amp plug. The next piece is this uh, female uh, connector. This is a female twist lock connector. Uh, again, purchased at a big box store, nothing special about it. It is a 30 amp 250 volt and the reason why I chose to go with that is because the actual plug that is in the machine is also a 30 amp 250 volt. And here it is so you can see it. This is the actual male that is in, that is connected directly to the Miller 200DX and so we need to use a female twist lock that's going to mate with it properly. Um, if I tried getting a smaller amperage one it wouldn't work. At least that's what I'm told. I didn't actually try it but uh, the people I talked to assured me that if I got a for example a 20 amp or a 15 amp uh, 120 volt or 110 volt uh, female that it just wouldn't wouldn't hook into this. Now honestly I have not had ex much experience with twist lock plugs so I took their word for it and uh, I guess it's better to be uh, you know beefier than not enough here so I don't think this is gonna hurt anything I don't think that uh, we're gonna have any problems with a you know 30 amp 250 even though we're gonna run um, you know 110, 120 uh, everything I've ever read always talks about bigger is better <laughs> when it comes to electrical. So, um, but again, if you're making one, make sure you find that information out for yourself. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this cap here. This is probably overkill to use the drill, but saves a little time. And there we go. So I'm looking at these and I'm seeing that we don't have a lot here to deal with. Um, it's not very substantial unlike the 240. Uh, but anyway, we'll deal with it. Now back here I took out these two screws already uh, for this little grommet I guess you'd call it. I'm gonna remove this because this wire is so thick that we're really not gonna need that. I'm sure this is gonna fit if it fits at all. It's just barely gonna make it in there so yeah, that, you see that'll... sorry that's a little out of camera but that'll barely make it in there um, and so the grommet just won't make it as well. So now what I have to do is I have to trim a little small section of this uh, outer sheeting off. Okay I've gone ahead and uh, removed a small section of this sheeting here. It looks like almost two inches worth and now I've also stripped back uh, the main wires and now what I'm going to do is give them a real good twisting. Um, Sometimes with the hand it's okay and other times you might want to actually use some pliers like some lineman pliers. Um, in fact I 
I think I might want to do that myself right now just to tighten this up a little bit and get these strands really tightened up, particularly at the ends. Because what happens is when you try to put these things in the into these little plugs, you know, they just they give you a hard time and then the next thing you know they're little stray strands are everywhere. So there we go. Well, that one could benefit from a little bit more tightening. Okay, so that's good there. So now I need to insert this through uh, this little guy here. These pieces here are designed to fit around the wire and snug it in there and cinch it in. Problem is the wire is so thick that it won't quite fit. These little tabs go inside and underneath. If you can see that they go, this little tab here goes actually inside and up and it holds it in place. The problem is that when both of them are in, the thickness of this material here is so much so that the cord just won't fit. And we don't want to have it so tight that uh, we can't get it in there because uh, that's a problem on multiple levels. One, we just flat out can't get it in. And two, my understanding of the way electricity works is if you cinch down on something too much, uh, you could possibly uh, cause a hot spot which could lead to a fire. So what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to either just leave it out like so and tighten it this way which is probably the easiest thing to do or I might even just you know take a little grinding wheel and just nip that off right there so I can just kind of made it to that so okay so here we are again uh, my solution to this ended up being I went ahead and cut off that tab with a little uh, cutting disc real quick and then I deburred the heck out of it by uh, using a file and making sure it's very very smooth we don't want to have any possible areas where um, you know the sheathing or wire can be cut that would not be good and what I went ahead and did if by chance you run into the same situation one of these tabs actually has the threads in it and the other one is just it's a straight through hole. Uh, obviously make sure the one that hooks into the piece is the one with the threads. That way everything will be held in place. You do the other one, who knows what will happen. So I'm going to head and tighten this up a little bit. Not a lot, just enough to where it cinches down on it to where you're pretty sure it's not going to go anywhere. But you don't want to squeeze the life out of it. I'd say that's about fine. And you can see there's not a lot of stick out here, and that's for a reason. We don't have a lot of space inside here. If you can see that, there's not a lot of space inside here, and the plug has to, you know, end up recessed back in there. So we can't afford to have much wire. So now this is going to be a little bit tricky to get these in. The next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and prepare the adapter for the female twist lock connector, which we have here. Now... This cord is a uh, 10 aug. It's very, very thick. It's got a very thick rubber or some kind of rubber like material sheathing on it. And this little opening, not going to cut it. So, what I did on this one and the other one is that I actually modified, I actually modified the hole here uh, to accept this thick cord. Otherwise, it uh, just isn't going to work out. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove. this. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to remove the gasket because I don't want to damage it and put it off to the side. Oops. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this back up and screw it back into place. Now what I did very simply was I took one of these step drills uh, that you can find out there. Uh, and I went ahead and opened up the hole. Uh, now that it's nice and tight, I take it and just very simply, and it works really easy since it's just plastic, just go right down the middle. Then I come around the other side, and I'm lucky enough I got holes in my table here that really helps for this. And I'll go ahead and just roughly rough that out too. 
and I get most of the way in there. You can see inside there, I got most of that hole. And now that this hole has been opened up like this, it makes it a heck of a lot easier. Okay, so the first thing I did here is I reinstalled this little uh, gasket or grommet, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to go ahead and feed the wires through the best I can. And put that through to about that distance for now. Now I'll go ahead and I'll put this plastic piece back on. And basically this has uh, some grooves here that this needs to go into. If you can see here, there's the groove on that side. And then we'll hit, whoops, we'll hit the groove on this side. Okay, and there's that. And get these guys in here just loosely for now. Okay, so now what we need to do is we've twist these wires up and basically get this into the connector here. So I'm gonna start. Remember I mentioned to you in the last video that I connected the X, and here it is, if you can see that, the X to the uh, white wire and the Y, there it is, Y to the black wire. The manufacturer recommends that you torque these down to 14 inch pounds of torque. Um, so I happen to have a torquing screwdriver and I've set it to 14 inch pounds. And now I'll just go ahead and go until you hear that click. Now I wanna go ahead and line this back up. And now I'll go ahead and tighten these up. And I should be almost there. There we go. I've got a low torque setting of two on this particular brand. So there we have it. And you see the opening here, the hole is sufficient. It's not pinching it off uh, at all because of the modification that we made. Otherwise, it just wouldn't fit in there. But yet it's in there nice and firmly. It's not going anywhere. And this is all wired up. So we've got one half. Okay, after a lot of fighting and cursing and all kinds of other stuff, I finally got this plug connected. I'm not sure if I'm entirely happy with it. I think the next time I'm at the big box or the local hardware store, I'm going to look and see if I can find uh, a better uh, plug, something that's maybe got a little bit, a little bulkier, a little more space in there, something more along the lines of the other end, because this cable is just so big and so heavy duty. I really had to scrunch things in here and that's never a good idea. Anyway, be that as it may, let's go ahead and test this guy out. We'll start by connecting this guy right into the outlet and I have one right here. It's actually a 20 amp outlet but it'll do the job. Now I'm gonna go ahead and connect the machine to our plug. Give it a twist, it's in. And now we'll stand back here, take a look at the machine and watch it fire up. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so we still have that little buzzy hum like before. Um, I didn't see anything that indicated on this dial like last time that this might be running 120 or 110. So perhaps I was wrong about that on the last one. But the good news is the machine is up and running and it's in, as you, both, as you all saw, a standard uh, 15 amp outlet. Um, so there we have it. Our two adapters are made. I uh, hope this has been helpful. But anyhow, that's it. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed these first two videos uh, from Weld Fever. That's uh, my channel. And uh, definitely hope to be doing some welding real soon. Bye-bye.